Gedling is at a crossroads, with politicians wanting to level up the area to its former industrial glory. But the borough has missed out on the lion's share of levelling up funding thus far. Labour councillors and the area's Conservative MP, Tom Randall, have been toing and froing over recent months as to whose fault that is. I think to face on both sides, you know, obviously we need to get sharper, um, but the, the government uh, seems to, when they can, they, they try and pick and choose uh, where, they, where they send the, the money. I mean, we have, we have a bid in to do uh, more work around leisures, leisure centres and uh, activities in, in Arnold, but across the whole borough, there's so much needs doing. It's infrastructure, it's, 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 it's travel, it's town centre, you know. We know Arnold needs some investment in it to make it more more vibrant, more thriving, thriving area that people want to, to come in shopping. I think levelling up's a big issue, and the issue is it's not just what we can do as a, as a borough council, it's what government can do, what county council can do, it's invest in, in education, in training, uh, in childcare. I mean, I, I, I remember we, we did, did show start to try and give people a head start. It was going to be 15 years before it paid off, and the, the Tories came into, into power in 2010 and, 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 and chopped it off. <laughs> we would love to see the tram come into, in, into Gedling. Uh, if you, a lot of Gedling people pass through Gedling to get into the city. The way we, as a, as a country, we need to have high skilled, high paying, high paying wages. Um, and in Gedling, it was just the same as everywhere else. You know, I mean, we've, we've lost things like the pit, which was, which was, well, high, was high, high, uh, high paying. There's other, other parts of the uh, area that uh, have, have suffered economically. We need to try and restore that. Tom Randall wants to improve the area. His vision is to transform the area into a high skilled, high wage commuter town with people working in technical jobs and in the city of Nottingham. Well, I have had a meeting with the Rail Minister to discuss rail services in Gedling. I'm very keen on, you know, acutely aware of the fact that rail services could be uh, more frequent than they are um, at the moment. In terms of connectivity, um, a lot of residents say they'd, they'd want better connectivity across the River Trent, and I've, I'm having minister, uh, meetings with ministers and I'm still carrying on badgering uh, people about the possibility of a fourth Trent crossing and see whether we can take that project to, to the next stage. And look, we've got the East Midlands, you know, we've got the, the Freeport and the Development Agency coming, the Development uh, Corporation coming uh, to the East Midlands. If they, if they happen and we've got better, we've got that better connectivity across the Trent, what we'll see is people in Gedling, um, you know, going to work in these places, going to get these high paid, um, sustainable green jobs. Um, I, I think that will, that is a good measure of levelling up in this area. This has been a very difficult two years. No one in 2019 would have predicted a once in a century pandemic and you know the biggest war in Europe uh, since 1945. Uh, that has pre presented uh, some challenges but I think as I say we've got increased health and education spending locally, we've got more police on the streets. On housing, the Borough Council wants to provide people with homes even if that means building on green land. Tom Randall, however, would prefer brownfield sites to be used and to give residents more of a say. It's not just residents who have a house, it's residents who want a house. We have a target of something like 8,000 houses um, because that's what people, people need. And something like 71% of Gedling Borough is Greenbelt. So it's, it's not as if we're concreting over all of the green spaces, you know, there's, there's lots of green spaces and uh, lots of areas that we want to, uh, we need to, to develop to provide the homes that, that people need. In many ways, people, people who live in homes near the green belts live in, live in houses that were initially on the, on the green belt. So it's a bit rich them saying it's fine for them to have houses on the green belt or on green spaces, but not for, for other people. It, it is getting that balance right. There is a demand for housing, um, population is growing, uh, but people are invested in their communities and they want, um, you know, if people are living in a village, they, they, they're attracted to that village because of its village identity. Um, one is building um, in brownfield developments, you know, building in areas that have already seen development of some kind, whether it's um, you know, some industrial use or something previously, so that we can reuse that space rather than building on fresh you know, farmland, for example. And also um, trying to sort of bring people into the, into the conversation on that and having high quality developments which people actually like and you know, like the look of and I think and I think try, trying to sort of get that buy-in as well is important. Councillor Ellis and Tom Randall also reflected on the 2019 general election and where their parties are heading. I think I don't think people have problems with the manifesto I think it was the overall image of the leadership 
and I think now we've got a leader, Keir Starmer, uh, as leader, uh, comes across as far more capable and competent and trustworthy. And so I think he, I think people, he's he's gradually gaining people's trust. Partygate is still still an issue for people, and people are telling us, uh, you know, I voted Tory last time, but never again. And we know there are lots of people who regret not voting for Vernon in 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 2019. I think I think he's getting tired of the number of people coming up to him and apologising for not voting for him. Tom Randall's practically invisible. He's he, he's not Gedling's uh, uh, representative in Westminster. He's the uh, government uh, Conservative Party central office representative in Gedling. You know, you people write to him and they just get uh, the, uh, the the party line. He doesn't seem to have any independent uh, uh, thinking. I think Boris Johnson is wounded. He's, he's seriously wounded by, by his own, you know, 40% of his own backbenchers have got no faith in him. So he's, he's seriously wounded by that. So he's, uh, but we've got a year, two years to the next election. Can we really stand? him in charge for two years, would we, would, would we better get somebody who knew what they were doing and was more competent? No, Michael hasn't got it. It's uh, it, um, uh, it's, not, it's not a safe seat, isn't it? You never, you know, people, people did say before 2019, oh, Vernon's safe, but we know it's not a safe seat. Uh, it's, a, it's very much a marginal seat. We had uh, Vernon from, two th uh, from 1997 um, because he worked the area and people knew him and people respected him. And uh, I'm sure Michael's going to try and do much, much the same. He's well known. Uh, he'll be uh, he'll be out and about, meeting people. He know he's from the area, so he knows what the area needs. Um, and he'd be he'd be a great candidate and hopefully a great MP. I think locally, um, I mean Vernon was was always conscious never to take anything for granted. And I know I worked on the election with him, and we worked really hard covering covering the area. So there was no way in which you would say Vernon was complacent. Some people may have may have thought that uh, Labour was a, was a shoe in in, in, in Gedling, um, but it proved it proved it wasn't. There were all sorts of things going on. There was still Brexit. There was the Corbyn factor, whole whole load of things, and we just got caught in the storm. There's only one poll that ever matters at the end of the day, and that's on polling day itself. And I remember in the run up to the 2019 election, everyone was telling me that I wasn't going to win. Uh, I remember The Economist uh, did a poll um, in the run up um, uh, which said that I was, I was going to lose. Indeed, I remember the quote at the end that was by Vernon Coker, who said, We're all, always supposed to lose in Gedling, uh, but we never do. So uh, we've been in power, uh, the Conservatives have been in power in one form or another for 12 years. 12 years now it's been a long time we're midterm and always when you're midterm um you know the, the the governing parties and doing faring too well in the polls and i appreciate that there has been a lot of anger uh, there has been a lot of dismay at what has happened uh, and has been reported there are legitimate question criticisms that have been made of, of the culture and practice in downing street but i've also had to balance that against the, the broader picture of the of the prime minister's leadership um, and on those big decisions, I think on, on vaccines, on, on the response to the war in Ukraine, um, that the Prime Minister has made the right decisions. And, and, and how, after balancing those things out, I made a decision to, to vote in the way that I did.